Stone sticks and people living in caves? That's right, it's time for the top 10 unusual Neanderthal punishments that actually existed. Number 10, Ray Romano. While listening to Ray Romano's voice for hours on end may be one of the harshest punishments ever conceived. Seriously, I wouldn't want to do that. What I was actually referring to was his portrayal of the woolly mammoth in Ice Age. Yes, the large tusk beast of the Forgotten Era. They were tough, and if Cross would surely spell the end of any Neanderthal brave enough to face one alone, which I'm sure at some point was. Cause trouble in the tribe? Well, then you have to bring us dinner, and we're hungry, so please go single-handedly and hunt and bring back a woolly mammoth. I couldn't even imagine. Unfortunately for those Neanderthals, this isn't Star Wars, and they weren't Boba Fett. Bringing back the head of a beast single-handed wasn't going to happen. They were most likely going to get trampled and left for archaeologists left to find thousands of years later. Yeah, no thanks. Number 9. Cliff While the Neanderthals might not have been as smart as their homo sapien counterparts, they were not exactly idiots. You find a high enough cliff, and you push said banished member off the cliff. It's simple but effective. There's a good chance that whomever gets pushed off said cliff will not cause trouble for the tribe any longer. This is something that many civilizations would do for many years. The Greeks, the Romans, just about everyone really. You can't blame them either. It's cheap and quick, and if the cliff or ledge is high enough, you don't ever have to worry about cleaning up. Although I wouldn't do it in a pit like the Spartans, that would just fill up too quickly. And no shot that was the first time that Leonidas kicked a dude in the pit, let's be honest. Is there someone who empties the hole later? Cliffs are just easier, just, just easier. Number 8, Ear Infections Okay, not exactly a punishment, but it could be a punishment from up above. Hear me out. Not exactly sure who did this to the Neanderthals. Maybe it was God, maybe it was evolution, maybe it was something else. But the Neanderthals were cursed with something that I don't ever want to experience again. Shout out to the people who don't want to put their head underwater because after about 5 hours, the bonfire on the beach isn't so fun with your friends because you have an ear infection. Yes, that's right, ear infections. I'm sure I just described someone's least favorite summer night. Well, according to a study in 2019, ear infections were common in Neanderthals and may have ruined many meals by the fireside. While humans like us eventually grow out of them due to our ears' insides growing larger as we grow older, the inside of Neanderthals' ears stayed small and were a perfect place for bacteria. And like most folks, you're not you when you're hungry. You're also not you if you can't hear the arctic monkeys playing by the bonfire because of a really bad ear infection. Honestly, if you ever had one, I'm just sorry. Number 7. Stick. This should come as no surprise, but a lot of problems or punishments were probably dealt with in the almighty stick. Cheap, somewhat effective, and in good supply. There's tons of expression for who's got the bigger stick, but like General Shepard from Modern Warfare 2 said, it also depends on who's swinging it. We'll never really know who was the first human-like creature to pick up a stick and wave it, but what we do know is that sticks are a part of everyday life, like tools and hunting. The sticks can also make for an excellent punishment delivering device. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but names can never hurt me. Well, maybe sometimes. Honestly, the only time I've ever been really hurt is when the world lost Harambe. Rest in peace, you silverback angel. <sighs> Life's never been the same since. Number 6. Rock. And you smell what the rock is cooking. Man, I miss the old rock. I miss the WWE. Those were just good times, weren't they? Stone Cold too. What a great guy. Speaking of rocks. Probably the next best thing to a stick is a rock. Probably even cheaper and more plentiful than sticks. All kinds of punishments can be derived from rocks. Simple techniques such as having the tribe fill baskets full of rocks and then throw them at you until you're seeing stars or just ceasing to exist. Or in a similar situation, throwing someone off of a cliff, take a semi-large rock and drop it from a large height on top of somebody's head. Methods are different, however, it usually ends up in the same results. Just wait till they find out what kind of minerals and ores are hiding in those rocks. Oh, the discovery of metal and metalworking. Number 5. Good soup. Perhaps we'll never know where any of these punishments truly come from, but like all things, they had to come from somewhere. Maybe they did come from Neanderthals. What I'm talking about here is boiling people alive in oil. Ah, <sighs> the good old days, which honestly sounds like the worst way to go. I, it just can't be nice. A practice that yet again was done all over. Giving people the lobster treatment must have been the worst looking, the worst sounding, and the worst smelling way to unalive someone. I happen to be a lover of theater, but man, this is a little too much. 
It's hard to call this anything but theatrics, as I'm sure there are much easier ways to achieve uh, certain goals. Honestly, you could probably cough on someone and would achieve the same result. Boy, am I thankful for sanitation. Number four, sacrifice. When your source of food gets taken away and then the rain doesn't stop for six days and six nights, and when your favorite VHS no longer works, it can truly only be an act of God. We have to please him, said a bunch of ooga booga men around the campfire. But how do we do this? Well, that's usually when the quiet person in the back speaks up. Sacrifice someone to the gods, he says. All right, sounds good to me. This was something that went on in many cultures around the world, but it makes you wonder who really was the first to try it, or rather keep trying it. I mean, hey, the buffalo came back, the rain stopped, and I just found my favorite VHS. Dude, we gotta sacrifice more people. Number three, the brazen bull. This might be the oldest punishment on the books. It also may be the worst. Seriously, this, this one's the worst. Similar to boiling in oil, however, this is just, just much worse. The brazen bull, basically what you got here is a bull made of bronze, and she's hollowed out like one of those walker things from Star Wars, with all the little stormtroopers in it. So you put the perpetrators inside, you lock them in, and then you start a fire underneath that would essentially cook your perps to well done. Make sure your perps are well oiled and salted. Keep on high heat until the screaming stops or the desired sin has been cooked away. Yeah, I can't even begin to imagine the horrible feeling that would be locked inside there. No amount of aloe vera could ever fix those burns. Number two, dishonored burial. You are born, you live, and then you pass away. That's life. You gotta make the best of it. And at the very end, the least you can hope for is that the people will love you and give you the proper send off that you deserve. This was a serious deal for those in the olden times. Every culture from every corner of the world has some sort of burial and ritual rites. However, imagine if you were the tribe's disgrace. Perhaps you ate all their food or never contributed to the tribe. Maybe you're the reason why my favorite VHS tape went missing. Well, sir or madam, for your crimes and disrespect against this tribe, when you pass on, you will not receive the proper burial rites. There's been a few cases of remains dug up different from others, which begs the question, what did the person do to deserve such dishonors? And what did they do with my favorite VHS tape? Number one, banishment. Hello darkness, my old friend. In the same way that most teenagers across the country feel when they discover hair dye, punk rock, and feelings, is probably the same way Neanderthals feel when they were banished from their homes. A simple plan, really. Non-violent, but quite effective. As you walked along the boulevard of broken dreams, you'd be searching for a new home in the brutal, cold, and scary world that was ye olde times. Not even your offspring will know you, as you may never return. Besides, you're in too deep, and you're trying to keep yourself alive with anything that you can find. The all-American rejected teenagers do this kind of isolation from the comfort of their warm, isolated bedrooms that are paid for by loving parents. The Neanderthals were serious, as leaving the safety of your numbers had many disadvantages. Not being eaten by a predator, for one. Stay strong, kids. Stay strong. That's gonna wrap it up for me today, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if your favorite VHS movie is Toy Story 2, then check out my socials linked down below. I've been your host, Big Jed, and stay sweet, my little honeybees. Yes, do it. Which I'm sure at some point was. Which I'm sure it was. While the Neanderthals might have been as smart as their. While the Neanderthals might have. <laughs> the only time I've ever been really hurt is when the world lost Harambe. Rest in peace, you silverback angel. <sighs> Life's never been the same since. Honestly, it's been downhill ever since. Just been plummeting. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? There you go. Throwback, baby. Let's go. No amount of aloe vera could ever fix those burns. Sunscreen joke?